Ads heard during the podcast that are not in my voice are placed by third-party agencies outside of my control and should not imply an endorsement by Weird Darkness or myself. Stories and content in Weird Darkness can be disturbing for some listeners and is intended for mature audiences only. Parental discretion is strongly advised. The Bermuda Triangle, also called the Devil's Triangle, is a famous part of the ocean where many ships and planes have mysteriously disappeared. Located between Bermuda, Puerto Rico, and the tip of Florida, this area has puzzled people for over a hundred years. From the spooky disappearance of the USS Cyclops with 306 crew members in 1918, to the more recent sinking of the SS El Faro in 2015, the Bermuda Triangle becomes more mysterious year after year. Tonight, we'll look at some of the strangest events in the Triangle, like Flight 19, which vanished during a routine training mission, and the Witchcraft, a boat that disappeared just minutes after calling for help. We'll look at other locations around the world, similar to the Bermuda Triangle, that don't get the same recognition, but are just as mysterious. And while we're in the water, we'll touch on a few ocean ghost stories and reports of sea monsters. So before we get started, if you tend to get seasick, you might want to grab your Dramamine. I'm Darren Marlar, and this is Weird Darkness. Welcome, Weirdos! I'm Darren Marlar, and this is Weird Darkness. Here you'll find stories of the paranormal, supernatural, legends, lore, the strange and bizarre, crime, conspiracy, mysterious, macabre, unsolved, and unexplained. Now bolt your doors, lock your windows, turn off your lights, and come with me into the weird darkness. The Bermuda Triangle is shrouded in mystery due to the absurdly large number of ships and planes that have met mysterious fates here. Some have vanished without a trace, while others have experienced strange phenomena, with incidents spanning as far back as 1880 to as recently as just a few years ago. 1880 – The Ellen Austin Incident the story of the Ellen Austin is one of the oldest and eeriest Bermuda Triangle mysteries. In 1880, the ship was traveling from London to New York when it encountered a derelict vessel. To tow it back, some of the Ellen Austin's crew boarded the ghost ship. However, a storm soon separated the two vessels. When the Ellen Austin found the derelict ship again, a completely different crew was aboard, and the original boarding party was never seen again. The fate of these sailors remains unknown. March 1918 – The Disappearance of the USS Cyclops The USS Cyclops holds the record for the largest loss of life on a non-combat ship in U.S. naval history. In March 1918, the ship left Brazil, headed for Baltimore. It was overloaded and had a broken starboard engine. After an unscheduled stop in Barbados to offload water, the ship continued on its journey but never arrived in Baltimore. The USS Cyclops and all 306 of its crew and passengers vanished without a trace, leaving behind one of the most enduring mysteries of the Bermuda Triangle. December 1945 – The Vanishing of Flight 19 one of the most famous Bermuda Triangle cases involves Flight 19, a group of five U.S. Navy Avenger torpedo bombers. On December 5, 1945, they left Fort Lauderdale, Florida for a routine three-hour exercise. Flight leader Lt. Charles C. Taylor became disoriented and believed his compass was malfunctioning. Despite radio communications indicating their increasing confusion and disorientation, the planes were never found. A rescue plane sent to search for them also vanished, deepening the mystery. July 1947 
The C-54 Skymaster Crash On July 3, 1947, Major Ralph Ward and five other crew members departed Bermuda in a C-54 Skymaster. The plane veered off course almost immediately, heading into a severe storm. The experienced pilot and navigator should have avoided the storm, yet they flew straight into its path. Two faint SOS calls were received before all communication ceased. Debris was later found, indicating sudden destruction, but why the crew flew into the storm remains a puzzle. January 1948 – The Disappearance of the Star Tiger On January 28, 1948, the British South American Airlines passenger plane Star Tiger was preparing to take off from Lisbon for Bermuda, with a refueling stop in Santa Maria. After resolving an engine problem, the plane reached Santa Maria but was delayed due to bad weather. The next day, the Star Tiger resumed its journey to Bermuda, flying at a low altitude to avoid strong winds. However, it disappeared without a trace, and a five-day search by the U.S. Air Force found no evidence of the plane or its 31 passengers and crew. December 1948 – The Mystery of the DC-3 on December 28, 1948, an airborne transport DC-3 took off from Puerto Rico for Miami, Florida. Captain Robert Lindquist reported their position and expected arrival time. However, 20 minutes before their estimated landing, all communication ceased, and the plane, along with its 31 passengers and crew, disappeared. Despite thorough searches, no trace of the DC-3 was ever found. 1954 the vanishing of Flight 441. In 1954, a U.S. military carrier aircraft carrying 42 passengers, including naval officers and their families, disappeared while en route from Maryland to a military base in the Azores. No distress calls were made, and no debris was ever found. The investigation concluded that structural failure in the stormy weather was possible but unlikely leaving the incident as one of the Bermuda Triangle's greatest mysteries. December 1967 – The Witchcraft Incident On December 22, 1967, Captain Dan Burrick and his friend, Father Patrick Horgan, set sail from Miami aboard the luxury cabin cruiser Witchcraft. They planned to view the Christmas lights from the water. At 9 p.m., Burak radioed the Coast Guard, reporting that they had hit something and needed to tow. He assured them it was not an emergency. However, when the Coast Guard arrived 20 minutes later, the witchcraft had vanished. Despite extensive searches covering 24,500 miles, no trace of the boat or its passengers was found. October 1, 2015 – The Sinking of the SS El Faro the Bermuda Triangle claimed its most recent victim on October 1, 2015, when the container ship SS El Faro sank. The ship left Jacksonville, Florida for Puerto Rico, intending to avoid a tropical storm. However, the storm intensified into Hurricane Joaquin, with winds of 90 miles per hour and waves up to 40 feet. The ship's last communication indicated it was losing power and taking on water. After weeks of searching, the SS El Faro was found in one piece, sitting upright, 15,000 feet below the ocean's surface. Have you ever wondered if the Bermuda Triangle is the only place where ships and planes mysteriously vanish? The answer is no. There are actually 12 such places around the world, collectively known as the Vile Vortices, We'll take a look at these locations and hear some of the creepy true tales that have taken place there when Weird Darkness returns. If you like what you're hearing on Weird Darkness, Please share it with someone you know who loves the paranormal or strange stories, true crime, monsters, or unsolved mysteries like you do. You can email me and follow me on social media through the Weird Darkness website. WeirdDarkness.com is also where you can find information on sponsors you heard during the show, listen to free audiobooks I've narrated, 
get the email newsletter, find other podcasts that I host, you can visit the store for creepy and cool Weird Darkness merchandise. Plus, it's where you can find the Hope in the Darkness page if you or someone you know is struggling with depression, addiction, or thoughts of harming yourself or others. And if you have a true paranormal or creepy tale to tell of your own, you can click on Tell Your Story. You can find all of that and more at WeirdDarkness.com. About a year ago, I began getting tons of notifications about how somebody was trying to log into my social media. I was getting email phishing scams on a daily basis. I was being inundated with email sales pitches from companies I'd never even heard of. I was getting calls and texts from those same companies. I was listening to a podcast that talked about Incogni, short for incognito, and I thought I'd give it a try. For the past year, Incogni has reduced the number of email and spam calls and texts that I receive, it's helped to protect my identity from hackers, and helps keep my data safe. Over the past year, Incogni has successfully removed my personal information from over 200 different data brokerage sites, and I get regular updates on how many are still in progress, how many have been successfully completed, and how many requests were sent out to remove my personal information. It would have taken me over 160 hours to do all of this, and nobody has time or patience for that. Fortunately, it's all taken care of by Incogni. I live online, personally and professionally, and I trust Incogni to help me live with a lot less worry. You can give Incogni a try right now by visiting WeirdDarkness.com slash Incogni. That's short for incognito. I-N-C-O-G-N-I. WeirdDarkness.com slash Incogni. We've all heard the chilling stories about the Bermuda Triangle, where ships and planes mysteriously vanish. But there are many other places around the world where similar, unexplained disappearances occur. These twelve places are collectively called the Vile Vortices, and, like the Bermuda Triangle, they hold some rather creepy secrets. Scientists are still not exactly sure how these Vile Vortices work, or why they happen. What we do know is that they are areas where strange, possibly even paranormal phenomena, disappearances and disturbing tales seem to commonly take place. Ivan T. Sanderson, a biologist, writer, and animal enthusiast with a passion for all things paranormal, mapped these 12 paranormally active areas in the early 70s and named them the Vile Vortices. These vortices are the Bermuda Triangle, the Algerian Megaliths, the city of Moenhodaro, the Hamakulia volcano east of Hawaii, the Devil's Sea, the South Atlantic Anomaly, the Wharton Basin, the Easter Island Megaliths east of Rio de Janeiro, the Loyalty Islands, the North Pole, and the South Pole. The most obvious and famous of the world's vortices is, of course, the Bermuda Triangle. Stretching from Miami to San Juan and all the way to Bermuda, the Bermuda Triangle covers a vast part of the Atlantic Ocean. This area is one of the busiest for air and sea travel, making it more likely for accidents to happen. Since Flight 19 and its 14 crew members vanished in 1945, strange stories about missing aircraft and ships have continued to capture people's imaginations. Reports of glowing water, spinning compasses, and possible alien abductions have been part of its lore for hundreds of years. Despite these tales, Scientists suggest that natural phenomena like the Gulf Stream and human error are the more likely culprits behind these disappearances, as we covered earlier. If you were to travel north from Timbuktu, you might come across an ancient burial ground at Jebel Mazala Salusta. Here there are impressive cave paintings and monoliths. However, the area is also known for the many planes that have disappeared while flying over the Sahara Desert. Some people believe this vortex may be the cause, possibly due to underground fault lines or powerful minerals. The mysteries of this ancient site remain unsolved. West of the Indus River in the Indus Valley, the remains of the ancient city of Moenhodaro, which means Mound of Krishna, can be found. It is believed to be one of the birthplaces of the Hindu religion. After its discovery in the 1920s, Archaeologists found the scattered corpses of at least 40 people. 
Considering the god Shiva, the god of destruction, is depicted frequently in the city, some believe the city holds dark powers that might have caused the mysterious disappearances of the Indus Valley civilizations. Off the coast of Hawaii, the Hamakalia volcano is believed to be the source of a vortex. This area is known for ship and plane disappearances. Local stories and scientific observations suggest that strange lights and piezomagnetic effects that's magnetization of rocks due to stress could interfere with navigation equipment. Being part of the Ring of Fire, this active volcano's electric energy might play a role in the mysterious occurrences. The Devil's Sea, or Dragon's Triangle, is off the coast of Japan and has a history of mysterious disappearances dating back to 1000 BC. Ancient Chinese legends spoke of a massive dragon that pulled ships to their doom. In the 1200s, even Kublai Khan's military forces fell prey to the Devil's Sea. In 1952, a research vessel, the Kaija Maru No. 5, set out to investigate, but disappeared with its crew of 31. The Japanese government declared the area unsafe for research and transportation. This vortex is located in the South Atlantic, where the Earth's inner radiation belt comes closest to the surface, creating a weak magnetic field and a flux of energetic particles. Satellites passing through this belt often experience malfunctions and astronauts report seeing strange lights. These phenomena can cause serious problems for aircraft, leading to mysterious disappearances. The Wharton Basin in the northeastern Indian Ocean is known for its deep fractures and seismic activity. Despite being studied extensively, researchers lack a detailed map of the ocean floor area. The basin gained recent fame as the possible resting place of Malaysia Airlines Flight MH370, which vanished in 2014. The fate of the plane remains unknown, adding to the basin's mysterious reputation. Easter Island, with its famous stone statues, is surrounded by mysteries, including how the massive statues were built and moved. Some believe that aliens helped move the stones, which ties into Sanderson's belief that UFOs might have something to do with the vile vortices. The civilization that built the statues eventually vanished due to poor resource management, adding another layer to the island's enigmas. The ocean east of Rio de Janeiro is another vortex site, known for its luxurious beaches and tourist attractions. While not as dangerous as other vortices, the area has its share of mysteries. The most notable incident was the disappearance of the Tonanta II, a small boat that vanished without a trace in 2014. Despite families' complaints, authorities showed little interest in finding a ship, adding to the mystery. Located off the east coast of Australia, the Loyalty Islands are known for their strange and violently changing currents, whirlpools, and water vortices. These conditions make sailing treacherous and many ships have been lost. In 2012, scientists discovered that a nearby island, long established on maps, had completely vanished, furthering the area's enigmatic reputation. The North Pole has long been known for its strange phenomena, such as compasses spinning wildly. In 1845, Captain Sir John Franklin led an expedition to the North Pole, but all 129 men were lost and few traces were found until over 150 years later. While weather and harsh conditions likely played a role, some believe something more sinister might be at work. Despite having a population of around 4,000 researchers, the South Pole remains largely unexplored due to its harsh weather and great distance. Some believe that ancient civilizations are hidden under the ice, evidenced by a mysterious rock formation that could be a pyramid. The true nature of the South Pole's mysteries remains one of the world's greatest enigmas. You might notice that these vortices are spread out across the globe, with half above the equator and half below. Five are along the Tropic of Capricorn, and five are along the Tropic of Cancer, with only the North and South Pole not being along these lines. This even distribution suggests a logical and mathematical pattern to the chaos. Sanderson and other paranormal theorists have proposed several ideas to explain these locations. One theory involves ley lines, which are believed to be alignments of spiritual energy or earthly feng shui. 
Another theory involves subtle matter energy or electromagnetic aberration, an idea that dates back to Plato. Despite these theories, the true cause of these paranormally active areas remains a mystery. For centuries, humans have spun tales about the mysterious creatures lurking beneath the ocean's surface. From ancient mythology to modern sightings, our fascination with sea monsters remains strong. With less than 20% of the world's oceans explored, could there be truth to these legends? When we return, we'll dive into true stories of mysterious sea serpents, giant squids, and mermaids. The Chilling True Terror of the Black-Eyed Kids, a monster compilation by G. Michael Vasey. The Black-Eyed Kids are an urban legend of vast proportions. The stories of small children turning up on people's doorsteps all across the world, spreading fear and terror, have only increased over time. This compilation of G. Michael Vasey's books on this scary phenomena include new material and new true stories, as well as the complete texts of The Black-Eyed Demons Are Coming and The Black-Eyed Kids. Supernatural expert G. Michael Vasey carefully investigates this truly terrifying phenomenon using real-life encounters with these scary supernatural beings. The result is an unsettling and sometimes terrifying book that'll have you fearfully anticipating that knock at your door, late at night. Who and what are these mysterious visitors to the doorstep? Are they demons? Aliens? What do they want? Why do they need to enter your home? And what happens if they do? Small kids that ask to use your phone or for a ride, and yet those who encounter them are scared to death even before they notice their black eyes. The Chilling True Terror of the Black-Eyed Kids, a monster compilation by G. Michael Vasey. Narrated by Weird Darkness host Darren Marlar. Hear a free sample on the audiobooks page at WeirdDarkness.com. Humankind has been telling stories about what's lurking beneath the planet's waters since we first stumbled out of our caves, fell in the ocean, and realized that it's not all it's cracked up to be. There's stuff that stings, bites, and squishes out there, and that's just on the beach. Imagine what's in the deeper waters. And we have, with a ton of tales going back to ancient mythology, the Bible, and oral traditions that have been passed down through the ages. We're fascinated with what might be out there, and we've discovered enough to know that we might not be that far off. The National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration says that as of 2021, less than 20% of the world's oceans have been explored. Is it possible, then, that there are some serious sea monsters hiding in the remaining 80%? Absolutely. For centuries, ships, sailors, and even those just observing from the safety of land have seen countless sea serpents, tentacled beasts, massive fish, and even mermaids. There are so many stories that there's got to be something to them, right? Some are more believable than others, but they're all supposedly true. So let's look at some of these sea monster stories that might just have more than a grain of truth to them. In late summer of 1817 and then again in 1819, the coast of Massachusetts was visited by a creature seen by hundreds of people. It was described as being a snake with his head and body about eight feet out of the water. His head is in the perfect shape as large as a head of a horse. Witnesses said that the serpent's body was about three feet in diameter, around 50 feet long, and that it moved in a vertical fashion, like a whale or a dolphin might. Originally spotted off the coast by a group of fishermen, it was initially thought to be an obvious hoax, until it got close enough to land that suddenly people believed. 
During the first rash of sightings in 1817, one person even shot it in the head with a musket. Because that's what you do when you meet magical, mysterious new creatures. You try to kill them. While some modern cynics have chalked the whole thing up to mass hysteria, many others believe there was something out there. What? It's unclear, but it's been suggested that the humped appearance of the creature may have actually been a school of individuals that looked like a single creature from a distance. Joe Nickel, of Skeptical Inquirer, honed in on part of the description that said the creature's sting is about four feet in length, and he suggests they were actually looking at a small group of narwhals. In 1959, a fisherman named Tex Geddes and his friend, an engineer named James Gavin, were boating off the coast of Scotland's Soe Island. That, says Scientific American, is when they reported an honest-to-gosh sea monster surfacing a little too close for comfort. It was, they reported, between six and ten feet in length, and had a head that was roughly the same size as a donkey's but shaped a bit like a turtle. They called it a hellish monster of prehistoric times and said that it was breathing heavily through a large red gash of a mouth. The story went a little pre-internet viral, and when the Illustrated London News picked it up, they included some pretty sensationalized photos that suggested the two men had seen some sort of sea dragon, complete with serpentine body and ridges along the spine. But here's the thing, based on the terrifying but slightly more realistic sketches that the men made themselves, it's entirely likely that they really did see a massive prehistoric creature, namely a turtle specifically a leatherback, which is one of the few turtles that reach the sizes they described, a shell that might be exaggerated into ridged and creepy spiny teeth. Another less credible alternative is that they saw some sort of undiscovered sea turtle, or an actual, you know, sea monster. Whatever it really was, they clearly saw something. One of the defining characteristics of most sea monsters and sea serpents is a long neck, and back in the 17th century, a botanist named Nehemiah Grew came up with what he thought might be an explanation for sea serpent sightings. But here's the thing. The creature he defined is just as mysterious as the sea serpents. Grew, notes the Public Domain Review, was a legitimate scientist who revolutionized everything we know about plant anatomy. When he assembled a catalog of specimens at the Royal Society of London in the late 1600s, he included a description of a skin that had belonged to a seal that reportedly had a neck that was just as long as the rest of the body. It would explain some sea monster sightings, but there's a giant catch. The skin that Gru was talking about had disappeared, and no other long-necked seals have ever been seen. That hasn't stopped experts, like the 19th century zoologist Anthony Cornelius Odemans, from arguing that the specimen that grew catalogued was what countless people had actually seen when they thought sea serpent. Even then, he was pretty thoroughly scoffed at for suggesting the idea, and the long-necked seal has been relegated to the mythical cryptozoological section of natural sciences. Still, New Scientist points out that University of London researchers estimate there's still a number of pinniped species we just haven't found yet, so maybe Gru was right all along. It was June of 1967, and passengers on the ferry near Maine Island in British Columbia suddenly found themselves being treated to quite the sight. The story was reported in the Times Colonist, and not only did multiple people swear they saw a blonde-haired mermaid sitting on the shore of Maine Island, but they confirmed each other's details. She'd been sitting there, holding a fish, specifically a coho salmon, and one person even thought they saw her eating it. Everyone agreed on another aspect of the sighting. She was completely topless. As a male witness put it, it was definitely a girl. Definitely. There was photographic evidence, too, and not just the blurry, grainy kind that seems to conveniently keep happening, no matter how good cell phone cameras get. Multiple people took multiple pictures, showing exactly what everyone claimed. There was a mermaid on Maine Island showing the world what she had. A $25,000 reward was offered by the Undersea Gardens, but nothing ever came of it, until they re-ran a piece on the story in 2016. That's when Times colonist reporter Dave Obi tracked down Judy Allred, who, after telling him, you have no life, honey, fully admitted that she had been the mermaid. She'd been recruited by a few locals to don a mermaid costume and sit on the rocks. 
all to promote a local fishing derby. And there it is, a real mermaid sighting. Hans Provelsen Aged was a priest and a missionary, and he was a major player in the colonization of Greenland, says Aarhus Universität. According to a piece published in the Archives of Natural History, Aged was well known for drawing and documenting numerous whale species, but he was still stumped by the 1734 appearance of a most dreadful monster. It was Aged's son Paul who was on a trip from Denmark to Greenland and reported a very horrible sea creature which rose itself so high over the water that the head of it reached over our big yard arm. He went on to describe a long snout, broad flippers, wrinkled, rough, and scaly skin, and a body that thrashed around in the water and blew great gusts of breath like a whale. It followed along the ship for a bit, then dove back under the water. He wasn't the only one to see it, and others on the ship also described a serpentine tail, red eyes, and a strange scaly skin. Paul, too, was incredibly familiar with whales, and while he described the creature in terms of one, he also made it clear that it wasn't a whale. At least, not an entire whale. The general consensus is that Paul Aged and his crew really did see something, and that it was entirely possible that it was part of a male whale who was just really, really happy to see them. Today, the term mermaid brings up all kinds of images of beautiful women with long, flowing hair, but that wasn't always the case. In spring of 1671, six people claimed to have seen a merman off the coast of Martinique. He hung around, half out of the water, long enough for them to get more than a fleeting glance, and they were able to describe him really well. They agreed he was about the size of a young teenager, was human from the waist up, and had large eyes, a snub nose, and wild, shoulder-length hair that was gray, white, and black. According to the Edward Worth Library, the description was taken pretty seriously at the time. Six individuals agreed on what they had seen, and once it started circulating in Europe, naturalists tried to figure out just what the heck it was. Many were careful to say that it might not be a merman, but the whole thing was weird enough that they gave themselves an out by saying that it was definitely worth researching more. There's a good reason that their eyewitness accounts of seeing a merman were so believable. According to the Smithsonian, manatees were so commonly mistaken for mermaids that their scientific name is a reference to the mermaid's mythological cousin, the siren. Greek mythology seems like the last place you might look for sea monster stories that have an air of truth about them but there actually is one that might have the biggest skeptic nodding and saying, yeah, I can see that if I squint a little bit. That's the story of Charybdis, and according to Theoi, Charybdis was a tidal demon said to be the daughter of the land and the sea who abused her power so badly that Zeus chained her to the sea floor, where she still resides. The believable part is what she does. Charybdis lived in the strait between Italy and Sicily, and every day she swallowed and then regurgitated the water. She gets a mention in numerous classics where ill-fated travelers are faced with whirlpools and deadly currents that threaten to smash them against the rocks. Jason's tale recalled waters that seethed and roared incessantly, while Homer's Odyssey described waters that withdrew to the sea floor. These might not be a sea monster causing this deadly phenomenon, but anyone sailing through could believe it because it was that bad. According to the BBC, the strait was home to Charybdis into the 19th century and was known as a place where tides from the Tyrrhenian and Ionian seas met, creating such rocky, dangerous waters that, honestly, a sea monster is almost the most believable reason for it. Historian and author Matthew Willis calls the events of August 6, 1848, one of the most well-documented and credible sea monster sightings in history, and the crew of the HMS Dautilus risked everything to try to get people to believe them. Captain Peter McKay gave an official report to the Royal Navy and wrote that the ship had been approached by a creature moving fast, but close enough that he and his officers got a good look at the head and shoulders of the 60-foot-long serpent. He testified, via skeptical inquirer, that the head was without any doubt that of a snake, and it was never, during the twenty minutes that it continued inside of our glasses, once below the surface of the water. It was a dark brown fading to yellow at the throat, and he added that while there were no fins, it did have a ridge of what looked like hair down its back. As members of the Royal Navy, 
McKay and his crew had nothing to gain and everything to lose, and as it turns out, they were heartily ridiculed as scientists tried explaining what they had seen by suggesting it was something like an elephant seal, animals that lifelong Navy men would have been able to recognize. Just what they saw has never been decided, and the sighting of the HMS Nautilus remains one of the most credible. Say what you will about Christopher Columbus, and people have a lot to say about him, but one thing no one can take away is that he was a legit explorer at a time when there were entire patches of the globe that were still labeled Here Be Dragons. He was on the Atlantic Ocean in January of 1493, and on the 9th, he recorded in his journal something pretty shocking. He had seen three mermaids, and he wasn't really impressed. He wrote that they were not half as beautiful as they're said to be, for their faces had some masculine traits. The creatures, he claimed, rose well out of the sea, and let's talk about where this sits on the believability scale. Did he really see something? Do we believe that there was something in the water near the Dominica Republic? Probably, but it wasn't exactly a mermaid. As unlikely as it seems, the not-so-graceful-looking manatees are capable of rising out of the water and balancing just on their tails for a short time, a move called a tail stand. Columbus wasn't alone in making the mistake, and sailors have been mixing up manatees and mermaids for a good long time. He was perhaps one of the first to be so downright rude about it. Manatees have feelings too, bro. In 1968, Captain William Hagland didn't see just a sea serpent, he caught one. His account via the University of Southampton testified that he'd been rowing along in a small dinghy when a snake-like creature started swimming alongside. At first, he says they thought it was a sea snake, but when he saw the massive eyes and the hooked nose, he knew it wasn't, so he grabbed a net and scooped it up. The creature they took back on the boat had scales along its back, a fuzzy yellow belly and a tail that ended in two overlapping flippers. Originally planning on turning the little fellow over to authorities to be studied, he wrote that as he lay awake listening to the creature splash and struggle in his bucket, he thought, if he perished in my hands, he would only be a forgotten curiosity. Hagelin was struck by a strong compassion for that little face staring up at me, so bravely awaiting its fate. And so he let it go. Hagelin's encounter was so well documented, though, that there ended up being 29 points of interest, so to speak. When biologists went back and tried to figure out just what it might have been, they could at least suspect that his so-called baby sea serpent had actually been a bay pipefish. But they're not entirely certain. Maybe it was a baby sea serpent. We can hope. When the Dutch zoologist Antoon Cornelius Odemans started collecting sightings of the Norwegian sea serpent called the Sea Orm, he found that between the first sightings around 1555 and his writings in 1892, there were more than 300. It was first recorded by the priest and epic mapmaker Olus Magnus, and it's on his Carta Marina that it's depicted as wrapping itself around an entire ship. While Olus Magnus had not created it, he'd certainly heard of it and promoted the whole idea. It was copied again and again, and by 1658 it was written in another book. They who in the works of navigation, or on the coasts of Norway, do all agree in the strange story that there is a serpent there which is of vast magnitude, namely 200 feet long and more, over 20 feet thick, and is wont to live in rocks and caves towards the sea coast about Burge. The Bishop of Bergen noted there was full and sufficient evidence from credible and experienced fishermen for the creature's existence and well into the 19th century, sailors continued to spot the creature rising out of the sea and spitting water, tossing a mane in the air, and diving back beneath the surface. There's been plenty of conjecture about just what was being described, but no one's really, really sure. But could that many people, centuries apart, be mistaken? Beyond the Bermuda Triangle, the seas are full of strange and scary stories that might make you think twice about stepping in past the shoreline. But this time it's not sea monsters you need to worry about, it's those areas of the ocean that are haunted. Up next.
No matter the time of day or season, sometimes you need to find a way to rid yourself of those ghostly chills that bring raised hairs and goosebumps to your skin. Other times you're looking for those ghostly chills. Either way, it sounds like you need a mug of Weird Dark Roast Coffee. Weird Dark Roast Coffee has deep notes of cocoa, caramel, and a touch of sinister sweetness that'll send shivers down your taste buds. This is an exclusive coffee that I selected specifically for you, my weirdo family. Weird Dark Roast is not available in stores, coffee houses, mad scientist labs, or even the dark web, but you can find it at WeirdDarkness.com slash coffee. Weird Dark Roast Coffee – fresh roasted to order so it's as fresh as it can be when it lands on your doorstep and knocks three times. Grab yours now at WeirdDarkness.com slash coffee. That's WeirdDarkness.com slash coffee. Weird Dark Roast Coffee does not actually knock on your door because it doesn't have arms or hands, so if you hear knocks at the door and no one answers when you ask who it is, it's probably paranormal and you should just leave the door shut and locked. If you've ever set foot around a campfire, you've probably heard your fair share of ghost stories, maybe about a headless man in the woods or the spirit of a long-lost child. But are you familiar with stories of ghost ships and other ghoulish tales that are set out at sea? Sure, we've all heard Bermuda Triangle stories, but there are plenty of other terrifying tales that take place on the open ocean. The legend of the Orang Medan may be one of the creepiest maritime ghost stories ever told. The story goes that sometime in the 1940s, ships near the Strait of Malacca received a distress signal from a Dutch cargo ship, the SS Orang Medan. When the rescuers boarded the ship to save the crew, they made quite a grisly discovery. The entire crew had perished, but somehow there were no signs of foul play. Legend says that they laid all throughout the ship with faces frozen in terror and arms reaching out for help. But before an investigation could commence, the ship burst into flames, burning any evidence which may have helped solve the mystery of the Orang Medan. On March 1878, en route to Portsmouth from Bermuda and the West Indies, the naval ship HMS Eurydice was caught in an unbelievable snowstorm off the coast of the Isle of Wight. The ship capsized and sank taking the lives of all but two of the 281 crew members. A young Winston Churchill bore witness to the event. Since the ship capsized, many have reported seeing it afloat just where it is said to have sunk. Some of these reports have even come from reputable sources such as Prince Edward, Earl of Wessex, who claimed to have seen the ship sail off in the mist while filming a documentary in 1998, more than a hundred years after the ship's demise. In 1872, after just one month at sea en route from New York to Italy, the Mary Celeste was discovered sailing aimlessly near Portugal. A group of curious sailors boarded the ship, only to find the lone lifeboat was gone and the ten-person crew was nowhere to be found. Piracy and mutiny were ruled out as there weren't any signs of foul play aboard the ship, and the crew's belongings were left untouched. Over the years, people have theorized that either the crew abandoned ship or the Mary Celeste succumbed to the mysteries of the Bermuda Triangle. Either way, legend has it that every time the ship changed hands, bad luck seemed to follow. In the end, the boat was purposefully destroyed by its owner. The ominous final entry in the captain's book aboard the Jenny reads, May 4, 1823, no food for 71 days. I am the only one left alive. When the whaling boat Hope came upon the Jenny in 1840, they supposedly found the captain and his crew still aboard, but frozen to death after the ship became trapped in ice. Some even claim that the captain was found frozen in his chair, still holding the pen he had used to write his last words. Legend has it that the Octavius traveled from England to the Orient in 1761 and reached port the following year. However, on the trip back home while traveling throughout the Northwest Passage, the ship became lodged in ice and its crew perished. The Octavius was found drifting off the coast of Greenland by a whaling ship in 1775. The crew members were still below board, frozen more than a decade after their disappearance. 
The cargo ship SS Michimo was an abandoned ship found lodged in ice in the Arctic Ocean in the 1930s. The ship eventually broke free of the ice and began floating, sans crew, onto the ocean. Several attempts were made to board and stop the ship, but to no avail. The last sighting of the SS Bechimo, which up until then had been frequent, was in 1969, decades after its initial discovery. Though a 2006 investigation by the Alaskan government was launched to find the ship's whereabouts, these attempts were unsuccessful, and the SS Bechimo presumably still sails the seas to this day. The Carol A. Deering was discovered in shallow waters off the coast of North Carolina in 1921, with no crew on board. The ship had set sail a month prior, en route to deliver coal from Virginia to Rio de Janeiro. There was apparently discord on the ship between the captain and his crew, culminating in the first mate threatening the captain's life. After a brief stint in jail, the first mate reconciled with the captain, but something went horribly wrong as the Carol A. Deering returned home. On the return voyage, the Carol A. Deering allegedly made a call to the light vessel, a ship that acts as a lighthouse, reporting that they had lost the ship's anchors. Unfortunately, the captain of the light vessel was unable to report the incident because the ship's radio was broken. When the Carol A. Deering reappeared several weeks later, with the crew nowhere in sight, an official investigation was launched, yielding no results. In 2007, the Kaz-2, aka the Ghost Yacht, was found drifting near the Great Barrier Reef off the northeastern coast of Australia. The three-man crew was nowhere to be found, and surprisingly there were no signs of piracy or foul play of any sort. A video camera was found aboard containing footage of the three men sitting around, fishing in choppy water without life jackets on the first day of their voyage. Could the crew have succumbed to the ocean's waves? Investigators suspect they experienced a freak accident, though the men's bodies were never found. If the Mary Celeste is the introduction to all things ghost ship, then the Flying Dutchman is the Holy Grail. In this legend, the ship is doomed to sail the seven seas for all eternity and can never make port. Spotting it at sea is apparently a sign of misfortune. Some stories about the Flying Dutchman have been around for centuries, while others, notably Richard Wagner's opera, extended the myth. The most common theme in these legends is the Flying Dutchman's captain gambling with the devil and losing his salvation. That said, with so many different variations on the Flying Dutchman legend, it's unlikely we will ever know the truth. In 1906, a total of 136 people lost their lives when the SS Valencia encountered bad weather and smashed into a reef near Vancouver Island in an area known as the Graveyard of the Pacific. Hysteria broke out when passengers sought a way to flee the rapidly sinking ship, and against the captain's orders, they launched lifeboats that ultimately capsized. One of these even disappeared entirely. Legend has it that lost, ghostly lifeboats have been seen floating in the water near the wreck. The MV Joyita was reported missing in October 1955. It wasn't discovered by rescuers until several weeks later, when it was seen in the Pacific near the Fijian island of Vanuilevu, about 600 miles away from its intended destination. Curiously, where most ghost ships tend to be found aimlessly sailing the sea, the MV Joita was discovered partly submerged, with the crew, cargo, and lifeboat missing. The ship's discoverers did find suspicious signs of bloodshed. Many people theorize mutiny and piracy were involved, while others think it may have been the target of a Soviet submarine. Either way, the crew members were never found. Why have there been reports of a ghost ship sailing the English Channel every 50 years since the 1700s? Perhaps the story of the Lady Lava Bond has some answers. Legend says that the Lady Lava Bond's captain and his new wife took a romantic cruise from England to Portugal in 1748, but tragedy struck when the first mate, who was in love with the captain's wife, deliberately wrecked the ship out of jealousy. The ship subsequently sank, and everyone on board perished. According to legend, it is still sailing around the coast of Kent. Discovered ashore without any signs of its five-person crew in 1917, the France-bound Zabrina was found completely intact, with no signs of piracy or mutiny. In fact, reports show that the table in the dining hall was set for breakfast. 
Some people believe that the ship may have been intercepted by a German U-boat, which likely tried to torpedo the Zabrina but failed due to the ship's flat bottom. The U-boat crew could have then boarded the ship and taken the crew as hostages. Despite this theory, the mystery still remains. Thanks for listening. If you like what you heard, be sure to subscribe so you don't miss future episodes. All stories used in Weird Darkness are purported to be true unless stated otherwise, and you can find links to the authors, stories, and sources I used in the episode description as well as on the website at WeirdDarkness.com. Weird Darkness is a registered trademark. Copyright Weird Darkness. And now that we're coming out of the dark, I'll leave you with a little light. Matthew 7 verses 13 and 14. Enter through the narrow gate, for wide is the gate and broad is the road that leads to destruction, and many enter through it. But small is the gate and narrow the road that leads to life, and only a few find it. And a final thought. We make a living by what we get. We make a life by what we give. Winston Churchill. I'm Darren Marlar. Thanks for joining me in the weird darkness.